Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of How to Look Like a Rockstar on Your Thesis or Dissertation. Today we're going to talk about running correlations in Excel. Now Excel is a fabulous program that's widely available uh, and is great for running a lot of different statistical tests. But one of the statistical tests it's not quite great at is correlations. Um, and so today we're going to talk about three ways through three steps to getting around some of those glitches in it, how Excel handles correlations. Namely, our three steps are going to be uh, making a scatter plot of our data, running the actual correlation using the corel function, and then running a regression using the data analysis tool pack. So let's begin. I've got a fake made up data set here with three simple columns. The first column is the ID of a horse, the second column is the weight of that horse, and the third column is the height in inches. So we're very simply going to look at uh, is there a relationship between the weight of horses and their height in inches. Um, so to do that, the first step we're going to take is we're just going to look at our data in a scatter plot. So I'll highlight uh, B and C and then hold shift control and push the down arrow to highlight the whole set of 31 horses and then we'll go to insert and then on the charts area you'll see the scatter plot logo. I'll click on that and choose scatter and right there we see it. We can see from the scatter plot that there is a definite linear relationship between the weight of horses as shown on this axis and the height of horses in inches. And so as we do the next two steps we'll expect to see something similar. All right, the next way we're going to look at a correlation is with the go-to function to do a correlation in Excel, and that is the Corel function. To do that, we'll type equals C-O-R-E-L, open parentheses, then we'll, we'll click and drag our first column of data, and that's our weight data. So I'll highlight that, and then we'll put a column, or I'm going to call it comma, then we'll do our second column of data, and then close parentheses and push enter. And you'll see uh, the number it gives us is 0.9. So that's a very high correlation. But uh, that's just our R value, our little R value for the correlation. That's not, uh, that doesn't have the P value. And so of course when you're reporting your statistics and your thesis or dissertation, you of course need to report the P value with any correlation you do. And so this leaves us kind of stuck. Uh, now we can go ahead and calculate the p-value by hand. There's several different pretty simple formulas to do that. Or we have an even easier option, and that is to rerun this as a regression using the data analysis tool, tab, tool pack. So to do that, you'll click on data, then data analysis. Now if you don't have the data analysis tool pack, be sure to check out my YouTube channel because um, there's a 30 second video on how to install that on your computer. Uh, so I'll click on data analysis, and we'll click on regression. And then OK. And then we'll just, just like we did for the Corel function, we'll fill in our data. I like to include my labels in this data. And you'll see why in a second. And I'll fill in the second one. The height. And then we'll check the box for labels, because we did highlight the labels. Our output range, we can put it in, how about cell E22. And then we don't need, for this data, we don't need any plots. And then we'll click OK. And it spits out this huge table of information. Now, for the purposes of this, for just using this as a correlation, there's only really two cells we need to look at. And they are this cell, the multiple R, or big R. So I'll highlight that for us. And this cell down here, significance F. And I'll highlight that one. Now, if we did everything right, this cell, the multiple R, will equal our R from the Corel function. And it does. That's good. That's a way to check your data. And this value down here is our p-value for the correlation. Now, uh, it looks like it's above 0.05, but because of the scientific notation Excel uses, we know we need to move that decimal place 12 spots to the left. And so that would make it way less than 0.05 or would mean that our data was statistically significant. There was a statistically significant relationship within our data. So, good going. We have something. Now, the question on everybody's mind right now is, I'm sure, why did you do the first two steps? The scatter plot, the Corel function, and then the regression. Why not just do the regression if that tells us everything we need? 
uh, we don't, you can't just start with the regression because the regression is only going to spit out a positive R. The regression only spits out positive values for R. So if this relationship was really negative, the regression would spit out a positive value. So we need either the scatter plot or the Corel function to tell us whether it's positive or negative. So there you have it. Three different ways to run a correlation in Excel. We ran first the scatter plot to show the visual relationship of our data. Then we ran the Corel function. And then we used the data analysis tool pack to run a quick regression. All right, that's it for today. I hope that helps.